Hey everyone, I'm Nate. And I'm Abby. This little guy here is Popeye and we are the RC Sailors. In this video, if it wasn't obvious enough by the title and the giant biplane sitting in front of us, we're going to review the Flightwork PT-17 Red Bull Stearman biplane. The first thing that there is to say about this plane is just, my gosh, look at it. <laughs> How just look at it. Beautiful. Would you look at that? Is that Just look plane. at it. I don't know if everybody gets that reference. It's kind of an old reference now. <clears throat> Just uh, the, from from the chrome scale prop on the front to every little bit of attention to detail, like the rivets in the, the side of the plane, details. windshields that glow, uh, glue on, and just the uh, wing struts, the flames, the red bull on top. And on bottom, mm -hmm. and the cool on the sides. Bulls on the bottom. Look at that, that's just absolutely one of the meanest and coolest looking planes that I own. Is probably one of the most scale planes that I do and I'm not saying that it is perfectly scale to a regular PT-17 Stearman but it is very close especially when compared to a plane like this. This is what I'm traditionally used to flying uh, an extra style plane in Acro and now I'm going this is probably my most scale plane so <clears throat> I, I say that for a reason and I'll point that out here in just a bit. From the get-go, out of the box, this was a short evening to put it together. And I think that the everything went together, 90% of the plane went together in an hour or less. The only thing that was remotely difficult to do was putting on the wing struts. And I'll save you guys a lot of time, a little headache uh, by this tip here. I tried to dry fit my wing struts, which is a good idea to line up and see if they'll fit in place, but you can't really put the bottom and the top on all of these brackets. There's one, two, three, four. There's eight connections on top and bottom. And to dry fit all of those, it's just almost impossible, even with Abby helping me. My tip to you when you build this is glue your wing struts and your brackets here in the center onto the bottom first after you've kind of dry fit it just to make sure you have them on the right way and then let that glue dry so that they stay in place when you put your top one on then turn the plane upside down to put your top brackets on let that glue dry and then it'll stay together just fine so that's my tip to you to save time in building this that's what i did and it worked for me and i used a foam glue and a <clears throat> after like inside the connection connections i used a foam glue and then on the outside of my seams I used a fast drying epoxy just to help have two different kinds of glue because that's the main thing holding your plane together right. is glue. When we unboxed this, I'll admit I was a little worried about the building process. Mm -hmm. I get I get the brunt of the building process. <laughs> if, if the build doesn't go well for me, I get <laughs> I know about <laughs> it. If the build doesn't go well. This one, that was not the case. I had no frustrations. So happy all. wife. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I don't know. That, she's right. <laughs> this, I, uh, <laughs> Love you. Uh, this one was easy. It was easy. All the electronics are pre-installed. Uh, the servos is very, very quick and easy to do. It comes with an instruction booklet that'll get you put together and in the air in an evening. If you don't count the glue dry time, you'll be you'll be in the air in less than 24 hours, I promise. Super easy to do. So let's talk about how it flies because this is an RC plane. You're not just gonna buy this to put it on a shelf or hang it from your ceiling, although it wouldn't be a bad idea to do. It's a very beautiful plane. Uh, it is an RC plane, so how did it fly? Well. I only have, I'll be honest with you, right now I have two flights under my belt because we have been dealing with some serious, crazy rain and super strong winds. Um, I shouldn't have flown in as much wind as I did, but it flew really well. Most of the time I was flying at about half to two thirds throttle and it was uh, moving right along super scale. You can see in the footage here and just looked beautiful. I mean, just beautiful. That's what, that's pretty much all I can say about this plane because I didn't fly it. 
was just gorgeous. I think I probably said that in the you first did. flight video like yeah. 12 billion times, but it was gorgeous. Yeah. It just looked good. And it was easy to film because it's big. Yeah. Like it. Uh, now it has, it's a four channel control system. So you've got aileron, throttle, elevator, and rudder. And your, sorry buddy, your, uh, <laughs> your elevator has you two replaced, Popeye. push, it's got two push rods coming off of one server, okay, servo, no, excuse no. me, for the elevator. So you do have a bit more uh, control there than just one push rod. Your rudder has one push rod coming off of its own servo and it hooks into a little plastic uh, flap on the back that allows your tail to steer with the rudder. So when you're taxiing around, it steers with the rudder. It works very well. And you've got two servos for your ailerons and uh, that's your four channels there. There are no ailerons on the top wing, but you do still have good enough control to do barrels, uh, loops, and some hammerheads and a little inverted flight. Uh, but in my flight footage, I have some sloppy barrel rolls and some sloppy loops because it was so windy and I need to adjust my push rods. I would recommend to you guys to put them out on the furthest hole so you have more uh, control over the plane if you want to fly stunts and things. If not, if you just want to fly at scale, then that's a good setting to have it on. You did fly at scale. I, I flew it. Yeah, I, I, it I flew scale. really scale. I, I was... Um, I think I was just enjoying having a plane that looked pretty real in the air and like I was flying it a bit with my dad and his glider and I, I'm just, <laughs> and most of the time when I got a plane or a quad in the air, I'm like full throttle baby, you know, let's do some crazy flips and flat spins and uh, death spirals this and hammerheads. This one was more and, like peaceful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just so pretty beautiful gorgeous yeah and just just really fun to watch flying through the air imagining what this would have been like the first day the real plane was coming off the manufacturing line maybe a guy was the test pilot in this thing I mean I was really getting myself um, immersed in the flying experience with this plane it's a very different feeling than I've had flying any other plane before because a lot of other planes that I've flown are, they don't look scale at all and you're just trying to see kind of what moves you can do to push your limits flying and uh, this was very immersive. The flying experience was very immersive and I really enjoyed that. This is one that I hope never uh, crashes or breaks. It just, it's so beautiful. I just don't want anything bad to happen to it. I think but... we're going to hang it from our ceiling <laughs> out in the garage. Yeah. I came down. <clears throat> Embarrassingly, kind of rough on both landings. Uh, it, just, it flies different than I'm used to. A lot of wind. Every excuses, excuse, excuses. Every excuse in the book. I came down kind of sloppy and a little rough, and my, my wings even tipped down. So I believe I believe one landing gear took the brunt of that of those landings on asphalt, not grass, and it held up really really well. So uh, it's good strong landing gear from experience. And um, there's one other thing about the construction. Oh, I really like this. It's a nice magnet that pulls off. You, you pull your little uh, canopy top off. And there's a lot of real estate in there for big batteries. Tons of real estate. You could put your GPS in there. You could put your, your big five GPS. Or are you flying on like a 2,450 milliamp or something? I think it is Random a minimum number. of like a 2,500 milliamp something battery. Like it's a four cell battery. You need four cells to fly this guy. It's got a 40 amp ESC and it's a nice, powerful, big brushless motor in there with more than enough power to make this guy uh, climb straight up and just at full throttle, you can do really anything, any stunts that a-, a You're gonna have to fly this again. I'll be flying it again. I, I told you guys at the beginning of the week that I'd have the review on a certain day, and so I am gonna give you that review, but I will be flying this more in the future because I want to be able to pull off very beautiful barrel rolls. Gorgeous! <laughs> Some nice loops. I want to. I want to fly this more to really get that immersive scale feeling even more before I um, get that. You know, sometimes you fly a plane and you, you just you've flown it a hundred times and then you think, before this one dies, I'm just going to hang it on my wall as a trophy. I'm not there yet with this. I want to keep flying it and keep just enjoying it because that's what it's meant for. And now I'm flying on a tactic transmitter. I will link it in the description box below. I use an eight channel transmitter, but you only need the four channels to fly on. I think they recommend a six channel transmitter. 
and you'll need a, at least a, probably about a six channel receiver. Um, <clears throat> and I use Tactic for that too. After each flight, nothing felt hot. My, my first flight, I think I flew for about eight or nine minutes and I did not have a uh, LiPo low voltage alarm in there or anything. I should have, that was kind of a stupid move on my part. I was excited to get in the air. There was like a, die, the wind died down, I wanted to fly. But I, I did not put one on, it was about an eight or nine flight, eight or nine minute flight. And then uh, my second flight, I put one of the little LiPo alarms in, in here on my battery and I flew for about nine minutes and the alarm never went off. It got dark and that's why I had to land. So I haven't pushed this to its like max flight time at all. Uh, so I hope to do that more in the future. Inside, there's a, uh, it comes with a Velcro strap for your battery pre-installed. It's a Dean's Ready connector, tons of real estate like Abby said, and uh, just, this was really well thought out. For a biplane to be under $200 receiver ready, this was really well thought out. Uh, one last little stat that a lot of people like to know, this is a 47 inch, uh, 1200 millimeter wingspan. Uh, so that's a pretty good size plane. We drive an SUV. Now. And, and now. Um, I don't and, think this would fit in my car. Probably not. It does fit in the trunk of the trunk space of the SUV with the seat laid down. In fact, we had four planes in the back. I guess of that's the, the only thing I wish you could do with this plane is somehow if there the was some type off. of bar system that you could take the wings off. Yeah. But I get why you can't I suppose clearly, but it'd be nice. That might be like one of the only negatives that do, it stands out. Um, yeah. There, there are two screws that mount on the bottom, but everything is glued Blame. to the fuselage, so you cannot take the yeah. wings off of this. Once it's together, this is it, this is your plane. So yeah. you have to have uh, suitable space to, uh, in your vehicle to transport. But it doesn't matter because it's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sincerely hope that this is not the last Red Bull plane to be on the channel. There are more on the Tower Hobbies site and that's where we got ours. We got it at towerhobbies.com. $180 and that's uh, without any coupon codes or anything a lot of times. that's receiver ready. That's receiver ready. So beautiful scale plane. My dad loved it because he loves biplanes and I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to like the way this thing looks and flies. Tower Hobbies somewhat recently picked up the flight work um, line of planes and that's exactly what this is. I'm very happy with it. I'm glad this is a part of my uh, RC plane collection now and I'm very proud to show this on the channel. Uh, excuse my somewhat sloppy flying. I still have to trim a few things up. This thing had a ton of lift. You will see this again, maybe, yeah. unless I break it. Yeah. Uh, if you have questions about it that maybe I forgot to cover something, let me know in the comments section below. I'll do everything I can to answer it for you. And uh, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you pick one of these up for yourself, let me know because I'd love to know who else has one of these in the air. It's just so, so beautiful. This is a good looking plane. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Gorgeous! Bye.